strong crypto systems with a netbook and an air gap. This segment of Hack 5. This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by GoToAssist. So the PGP implementation that we're going to be talking about today is using something that's known as an air gap. And that is just as such. There's literally a gap of air between these two machines. And that's really all it comes down to is that this machine I can consider secure because, and this is beautiful, it's not on the network. Okay, um, I just picked up the cheapest netbook that I could find that's small and light and, uh, and also put an awesome bumper sticker on it. But otherwise, uh, the idea here is this is now my machine where I can do you know, secure PGP messages and I know that it is one, never touch the network and two, never will touch the network. So if I just do an if config here, I can see the only interface that I have is low. And so it actually has, I, what I like about this is uh, the only way to put ethernet on this particular machine is to plug in this dongle, which I just won't do. And then there's a physical switch for the Wi-Fi. I'm actually gonna dig into the machine and just pull out the, uh, the uh, express card that has the, the Wi-Fi chip in it anyway. So gonna feel good about that. Now I've also set this up with my favorite distribution of Linux, and I've um, set it up with Lux full disk encryption. So again, taking advantage of everything at our disposal. And what we're going to do here is I'm gonna show you how, oh yeah, we're bringing it back old school. We're gonna use sneaker net to our advantage here uh, so that we can pass our messages back and forth between our internet connected uh, computer and our PGP offline machine. So let's begin by creating a new key and we're gonna do it the, the right way and create ourselves a strong key with uh, 4096 bits. So we've talked about, you know, mailvelope, but now we're gonna talk about doing it all in the command line in Linux using GNUPG. That's, uh, you know, GNU is not Unix, uh, its own you know, PGP implementation of the, uh, the open PGP spec. Uh, and this is good stuff. So if we do GPG, tac tac gen, dash key we can go ahead and generate our key and we're going to choose an rsa uh our default key the number one and we're going to choose 4096 bits okay and we're also going to say hey you know what this is going to expire in one year so the idea here is if you if i were to you know lose this machine and the full disk encryption were compromised and the well at that point the private key even if it's in ascii and they don't have my plain text even though uh i would consider my private key like no good i want to revoke that key pair so i would do a revocation certificate i'd put it up on the key servers or i'd send it to all the people that i'm using to communicate with this yada 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 point being this key is only good for a year so that kind of means that next year I have to generate a new key, and yes, it's a lot of hassle, but again, we're talking about security here. It's not necessarily convenient. Um, in fact, you could actually make that like two weeks if you really, really wanted to. So we're going to say yes, that sounds good. No, that's actually not good because the date is incorrect. So let me set the date. We're not going to party like it's 2009. No, we need to set the date. And the reason for this is, like I said, this machine has never been online, so it hasn't had the opportunity to talk to a network time server and actually set itself. So in that case, all we have to do is date tac tac set equals quote. And in this case, it is 9 sept uh, 2013. And then we'll give it a, a time. I think it's uh, 22. No, it is... 15, 54 o'clock, 100, close enough. And I need to do that with uh, root, so sudo bang bang. And there we go. Now if I enter in date, we can see that it's September 9th. Okay, so now let's generate that key again. Again, RSA, 4096, good for a year. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, and in this case, I'm going to say my name is Bob, and that my, hmm, Bob Bobberson, has to be at least five characters, okay, and the email address is bob at hack5.org. No comment. Sounds good, okay, and we enter in a really good passphrase, a really, really good passphrase. I can't stress enough how 
good that passphrase must be. Okay, and at this point now, it actually generates the key and it needs a lot of entropy, aka random data. Uh, for this, I'm gonna open up gedit to kind of help. I think I have gedit on this system. Do I not? Text editor, okay. And I'm just gonna start randomly typing. This helps it uh, generate entropy. I can also move the mouse around here. This little machine is funky. It's, it's so tiny, it only has one of those little nubbins, which is one of the reasons why I like it, because it will fit in my back pocket, kind of. And it's only a pound and a half. So if I do have to have a separate machine just to read email, might as well be tiny. Trade-off here is it's got an Atom processor. Remember those? Remember netbooks? I loved netbooks. I miss my EPC. All right. Way more data needed. And there we have it. Now, of course, it takes a little while here on this little Atom netbook, but the uh, point is we have just created our 4096-bit key, and now we can start exchanging messages as long as I keep my privacy key secure. I uh, should be in good shape. I just need to now get my public key to all of my friends. Mind you, this is not a uh, network-connected machine, so it's not as simple as just going and pasting this into a key server. No, we're going to actually have to get the information off of this and the most convenient way I can think of is simply using a USB drive. So for that, let's go ahead and export our public key onto USB. And for that, we're going to enter in GPG TAC Armor TAC Export. And then I'll call it Alice. I'm sorry, not Alice. Bob is my name here, Bob Boberson. And we're going to save that as a file called Bob underscore public key. And of ALS, oops, I did not redirect the output into the file. So, you know, greater than Bob public key, LS, and there's Bob's public key. So now it's simply a matter of copying it to the USB drive. my USB disk and now I can take this out and do the reverse over on my other machine. So for this demonstration I have this machine set up with Alice's public key. So I'm going to go ahead and put that on this as well as uh, ingest this and write a message for us. So let's take just a quick moment. All right, so we've copied over the messages and other uh, public keys and whatnot over to USB from our actual networked machine, and we're going to gap that air and come over to our secure machine, plug in that USB guy. Now, mind you, this is one of the vectors of attack. We are using USB, so make sure you trust whatever USB drive you're using. That said, it's simply a matter of importing keys, and then we can take a look at messages. So. What I'll do here is a gpg tac tac import and then slash, uh, I think it's in media, dk, usb, disk, and we're going to import Alice's key. So I have Alice underscore public key here, and I've gone ahead and imported her key. And if I actually ls that media, you'll see that, hey, look, there's a message for bob.txt.asc. Now, if I cat that message, you're going to see this is just a uh, PGP email, uh, or well, just a PGP message. But the, the idea here is I've used you know whatever my mail client may be, even if it's webmail, I just copy and paste this into a text file, okay? And that's fine for me to put that text file on a USB drive. I mean, this is already you know passed through in plain text over the internet anyway, and it's as secure as the private keys on both ends. So I'm not really too worried about that. What I've done here, though, is I've taken out of the machine where there are many attack vectors and put it onto this machine where I can now, as, as you've seen with me just importing uh, that key and I've got the, uh, the private one on the other end, I can actually go ahead and uh, read this. So in that case, it's simply a matter of doing a gpg dash dash decrypt and then slash media slash dk and then the message. And I'll enter in my very good passphrase. And there it is. I can see here that a free man 
is he that is not hindered to do what he hath the will to do. So if I'd actually like to write a reply to this, let's go ahead and set that up. Uh, it's pretty much as easy as doing a, well, we're going to create a new file here. I'm going to use nano because I feel like, or actually I'll just echo it in. Echo, that's a great quote, into a file called message one, right? And at this point, I would like to go ahead and encrypt this with my friend's public key that I already just imported. And that, for that, what I will do is gpg tac tac armor tac tac encrypt. And then in this case, the, the name of the file is message one, right? So go ahead and do that. It's going to ask who the recipients are. In this case, it is Alice. And it will say, OK, hey, you have this key here from Alice. Do you trust it? We're going to get into key signing here in just a bit. Uh, but suffice it to say, in this instance, I do trust this key. So I'm going to say yes. And that's it. I could add additional uh, users if I'd like to, but I'm done. So I'll hit Enter. And notice now if I ls that I have an additional file here. I have message1 and message1.asc. So if I cat message1, you'll see there's the uh, plain text of it. But if I cat message1.asc, that is what I need to copy and paste or uh, copy and paste into my email thread with Alice back on my networked machine. OK, so for that, we'll go ahead and copy message1.asc over to my USB drive. And there we have it. So at this point, I can go ahead and, you know, nothing in plain text has ever touched this USB drive. I can, you know, just download, you know, copy and paste this from my notepad or whatever have you uh, into my email client and actually continue having correspondence between Alice and Bob without anyone ever being the wiser. Uh, I will point out a couple of things here that at this point, uh, it would be a very wise thing for me to go ahead and shred the document over here. Uh, shred is a command in Linux. Shred tack f tack u tack z file does a, a fair job at basically zeroing out over and over and over randomly, you know, uh, changing around those bytes. It's, um, you know, to DOD spec, it's good stuff. to basically, you know, erase that file so the forensics investigators could never recover it, which is awesome. Um, and that coupled with the full disk encryption on here, and I'm starting to feel a little bit more comfortable. Now, I'm not saying that this system is perfect by any sort of the imagination. As you can see, it is actually fairly inconvenient. Um, and I should point out that this machine right here is not a good machine whoops, to cross borders with. So especially if you're going into the UK, they've got all sorts of fun stuff on the books. But, uh, you know, you don't want to be compelled to have to give that up or anything of that uh, such. Maybe you might consider doing something similar with a micro SD card with an encrypted bootable operating system that you put inside of a locket or some other sort of trinket. Uh, but obviously, what we've done here is we've narrowed down the attack vectors considerably. This networked machine, I have to worry about so many different things. I have to worry about keeping the operating system up to date. I have to say, like, is there a zero day on this software or that software? You know, what are the, what are, you know, where are my vulnerabilities? And with this, it really changes it to just physical security. So am I going to leave this in the hotel room while I gallivant around Europe? No, that'd be a bad move. This is why it's such a light machine. Um, so yes, there are a lot of trade-offs, and this is just to, to illustrate that you know the more secure you get, the less convenient it gets. But I find this to be a uh, an interesting solution, and I would love to hear how you guys think it could be improved. You know, obviously there are steps that we could take uh, as far as transferring the plain text uh, better, and um, you know I am still relying on you know an operating system that may have its own vulnerabilities in the full disk encryption, things of that nature. But uh, for the most part, I think this is uh, a, just a numerous amounts of steps uh, far and beyond, you know, Mailvelope or any of the other solutions on a networked machine. I'd love to hear your feedback. So of course, feedback at hack5.org. And as always, you can find my public key, hack5.org slash key slash Darren or on the MIT key servers. And um, with that, we're going to take a quick break, but I can't wait to hear from you guys.
In IT, issues can pop up at any moment. There are unexpected user problems, and boy are there. Uh, there's network and server complications, viruses. You guys know staying on top of it all is totally challenging, a lot of times stressful, but it's why I am excited about GoToAssist by Citrix because they take all of the services you need and integrate it into one simple cloud-based solution so you can take control of your unpredictable IT world. They've got GoToAssist monitoring, which helps you quickly and instantly identify potential issues before they become a big one, your boss is calling you, nobody likes that. You can customize the dashboard to display the performance of all of your networks and servers and desktops and get proactive alerts so you're the first one to know about any potential issues. And with GoToAssist remote support, you can provide live and unattended support to any PC, Mac, or mobile device from anywhere. And you can easily keep track of all of this with the GoToAssist service desk. I highly recommend GoToAssist. I've been using it for years and you can sign up for a special 30-day free trial today. Visit GoToAssist.com, click on the Try It Free button, and use the promo code HACK5. That's GoToAssist.com, promo code HAK5. Well, that just about wraps up this week's episode of Hack 5, but as always, want to remind you guys that we totally value your feedback, so feel free to email feedback at hack5.org. Let us know what you think, what you'd like us to cover. Uh, and make sure to check out the hack shop, hakshop.com. Sarah does an awesome job packing up everybody's orders for you guys. The other Shipping them out every day. What the other happened? day somebody asked in the notes field if she would send a, uh, a photo of a dinosaur. Oh, oh so you did the Philosoraptor. No, you not? no, no. We did an ASCII oh. dinosaur, and I, I autographed it and put, trust your technosaurus. Uh, <laughs> we have too much fun with that. Yeah, but we, thank you for the direct support. <laughs> yes, we really appreciate it. And check out the new play that we have in there. Ooh, if oh you yeah, didn't see the episode two weeks ago where I threw one, it actually survived and we used it the oh, other day you, at a barbecue. Oh yeah, yeah. you that were at fun. the barbecue, the Labor Day barbecue where we only lost one and a half planes. <laughs> where did it end up? Yeah, that's the other half that I'm worried about. Well, yeah, actually, <laughs> no, long story involves neighbors and yeah, I saw you yes. on the porch, uh -huh. and yeah, that was yeah. good times. <laughs> anyway, you can also follow us, hack5.org slash follow, for links to everything that we're doing, all the social not networks and whatnot over there, and I think we might have, a, like, a party or something. And the whatnot. Oh, Ooh. yes, there's some good stuff happening early October. Stay tuned, hack5.org slash follow. And with all of that, I'm Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morse. We're reminding you to trust, trust your, your techno lust. lust. Velociraptor. Hmm. Hi, hi.